Hi everybody, welcome back to part 7 of the 132 scale Mosquito build. This is the Tamiya kit and in this episode I want to get the brassing engine that I built last week. So I just built the basic engine unit. I want to try and get that mounted into the bearers this week and hopefully uh, assemble it into the nacelle if at all possible. I want to get these two engines uh, at the same stage. This is the Tamiya uh, engine as built straight from the box but the brassing engine is quite a bit more complicated there's an awful lot more plumbing and pipe work uh, on it and a lot more detail as well and working with the resin is likely to be quite a bit more difficult than just putting the Tamiya kit together so I'll get the engine that I built last week and we'll start to cut the bearer units out from the brassing set and let's see if we can make any progress with it Let's take a look at these bearers now. So we're on page 13 out of 20 in the brassing instructions. You remember last time if you watched part 6 we skipped forward uh, because all the front end of the instructions uh, relate to the port engine and we're doing the starboard one here. So these are the two bearers and as you can see with the brassing parts they come in one piece this in the Tamiya kit I think is at least three pieces the outer frame the inner one and a joining brace here uh, but the brassing uh, part the equivalent is just this one and there's quite a lot of uh, flash on this as you can see the molding flash just to support this fairly delicate structure and I've partially removed this right hand side one so I'm going to release this one from the blocks and do the clean up on both and then we can start to do a bit of assembly on this the first thing I need to do is to put a brand new exacto blade in the knife It's really important when you're cleaning this resin up to have a very sharp uh, scalpel blade uh, just to avoid putting any excess pressure on the resin and potentially snapping it. The other thing that I use are the snips or the side cutters here just to break away some of the excess resin. We can gradually nibble away at that. And the other method that I prefer to use, I like to use a lot, is a cutting disc in the motor tool just to work away along and release uh, all this excess material and get the part off its main block here, which is this thick piece of resin at the bottom. But because I'm using a motor tool I'm not going to be able to do that wet. You remember last time I mentioned that I like to saw resin in water just so that we don't create dust anywhere. But it's not possible to do that with a motor tool. So I'm going to mask up and go away and get this cut out. So with the majority of the block removed I can just go back with the scalpel now and start to remove some of these wafers of excess material. A resin part like this takes an awful lot more cleanup than the equivalent Tamiya plastic parts but you do save time in assembly and they are a bit more detailed as well so so obviously using resin parts like this isn't everybody's preference they're fairly expensive for one thing 
I think the twin engine set, the Brassin engine set, is about £45, something like that, in the UK. And the cleanup, as you can see, is a bit more laborious than the plastic parts. So I'm just going to work around. It's going to take quite a while, probably a good half hour to clean this part up. I am going to have to use this sanding sponge as well, just to clean these rods up. Uh, but because I'm sanding, I'm going to have to mask up. So uh, I'll just get all this done, then we'll come back and see what the next step is. Just getting the parts ready now to add some more detail to this left hand bearer. One of which is one of these pipes. And I had a message uh, last week after part six from Ralph Ingo, who was just mentioning that he sometimes has trouble with these very fine resin parts and was just asking me how I went about uh, clearing them. And there's a few things. The first one, as I mentioned, is to make sure that we have a brand new knife blade in to clear these. You don't want to put any pressure on these parts otherwise they will snap resins very brittle. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to make sure that the part's supported. You don't want to flex the part at all. So holding it down firmly on the bench or on the mat just break through the wafer there of excess resin. And all the time, just make sure that the part's properly supported. Starting to come away. And trimming this with a knife, I just hold my finger on the opposite side of the cut. Again, just to hold the part steady. And just scraping it in such a way that you're not flexing it, bending it back on itself. So basically we're just being very, very gentle with these. And just nibbling the wafers of flash away a little bit at a time. There's no rush in this really, you've just got to be very patient just to break each little piece away. Until finally the block comes off. And this is perhaps the most dangerous part because we don't have the block supporting it anymore. But just keep it down on the bench. can sand it but very gently and not from side to side because that will push the part from side to side. If you go along it like that again the part isn't flexing. It's very easy to catch these with your finger and flex them by mistake and that's a time when they really are vulnerable. They will break if you do that that's the pipe safely away from its casting block and just by using those one or two techniques it does help reduce the risk of breaking them. It's not possible always, I've broken plenty of these. But just providing support all the time when you're uh, sanding or scraping it with the knife. The other thing I try to do is get the part fitted as quickly as you can. Don't leave it lying around because you can easily catch it or knock it on the floor. So once it's off like that, get it fitted.
So that's stage one for the left hand bearer. Okay, so that's the engine bearers for this uh, starboard engine. And here we've got the resin bulkhead. And just before I glue these bearers together, I want to check this part, the fit of it, against the Tamiya nacelle. What I don't want to happen is to get all the painting done on this and have to make adjustments to the assembly once I come to fit it to the rest of the Tamiya kit. So I'll just give this a clean up first and then we'll just give it a check fit against the Tamiya parts. This is the Tamiya starboard nacelle. And there's a bit of a problem here because the holes in the sides here are meant to engage with the Tamiya uh, studs on here and they don't line up, they're too close together on the resin part and I'm not sure which is in the wrong place really so, so I'm just going to have to check the fit of this whole assembly up against the wing of the kit because obviously this bulkhead needs to fit accurately with the wing. It just about goes on that side, but it's really strange because it doesn't lie flush with the side of the nacelle. There's the gap that you can see there down the side. Whereas if we look at the Tamiya bulkhead, it's perfectly flush all the way down. So I think we've got some work to do with this before we can get it to fit properly. The other problem we've got is that the notches in the bulkhead just here don't align with the frames at the side of the nacelle here. And again if we look at the Tamiya the notches obviously line up perfectly with the uh, side frames on the nacelle. So this isn't going to be straightforward I'm afraid. Fitting this part here to the top will just enable me to check the positioning of this bulkhead into the Tamiya wing. So we'll just move these out of the way and let's just take a look at how we're going to get this bulkhead to line up. And I'll do that obviously before I do any more work on the bearers. There's no point getting all these delicate uh, resin and cables in position if the basic bulkhead's not going to fit properly. I'll just compare the position of it with the Tamiya. That tells me that this isn't correct because we've got a gap here 
between the top of the bearer and this bracket here. So it's probably a millimeter out of position on that side. And maybe getting on for half a millimeter on the inboard side. I'm just not convinced at all about using this bulkhead to get it to sit up properly. So to get the top mounting points for the uh, engine bearers tight up to this bracket on the Tamiya plastic part, we've got to push that right up and it sends this notch out of line here and also to get the sides of the nacelle tight onto the bulkhead so that there's no gap, uh, just like we've got here on the Tamiya assembly. There's no gap down the side. And to achieve that on the resin part, I've had to remove one of the mounting stubs on the resin part. And in turn, that's pulled the nacelles too close together at the bottom. So it's pinching the nacelles in. So I just think that's going to lead to too many problems later on in the assembly. I'm not sure that the engine will fit properly and of course once I've glued all this together it'll be too late to do anything about it. So I just think it might set off a chain of corrections that will end up spoiling the model. So I just don't really want to take that risk. The problem with using the Tamiya bulkhead in combination with the brassin engine bearers is that in the Tamiya kit the bulkhead assembly with its legs with the undercarriage legs here uh, needs to be constructed with the bearers and these backstays as well so these parts so we can't use the whole of the leg assembly uh, from the Tamiya kit so what I've done is I've modified the Tamiya parts that I'm going to be using. You need to have these to use with the plastic uh, engine bulkhead. So what I've done is I've removed the engine bearers from this Tamiya part. So this is the undercarriage leg and the backstay. And originally it has the engine bearer or the inner engine bearer molded integral to it. So I've removed that and I've started to modify it a little bit so I've cut a notch out here and drilled a hole in the top and that will accept the resin engine bearer. So I'm hoping that that solution will enable us to carry on using the resin uh, more detailed resin parts in the brass inset for the engine bearer and all the accessory parts for the engine but maintain the structural integrity, if you like, of the model by using the undercarriage legs and this bulkhead. So that's a significant deviation, really, from the way that both Tamiya and Edward would have you build uh, these uh, engine nacelles and engines. But I can't really think of a way of using the brass in engine bearers with its accompanying uh, bulkhead part, which is this, uh, and not potentially run into problems later on in the build when it's too late. And the kit's just too expensive to take that chance. So really, although it appears to be quite a bit of work to do this, uh, it's really a precaution uh, to avoid basically trashing the kit. So I'll just alter this other undercarriage leg and the engine bearer mounts here. I've already done this one as you've seen so that's ready to use. And what it involves really is first of all drilling a hole in the top mounting here which is simple enough. But to get a nice fit of the bottom mounting which is this one we just need to do a bit of surgery on the bottom mount of the Tamiya plastic. So I'll get the drill out and we'll uh, get those alterations made. So 
So I'm just starting off with a pilot hole there. So on the lower mounting here, I'm just going to cut away some of the plastic so that we're basically just halving the width and I'm just leaving the outer shell of the mount which has got some bolt head detail on it on the outside and that just enables the lower mount to sit behind it like that. So that has basically just left the outer face of this lower mounting point and the lower part of the bearer just sits behind that. I've also thinned out the resin part as well so basically just halve that mounting point. The key to positioning this bearer is that we want a 90 degree angle between the undercarriage leg and this lower part of the engine bearer. Uh, and we get that by just adjusting the hole at the top. So you can see that angle here on the uh, Tamiya assembly with the undercarriage leg and the lower part of the bearer here at 90 degrees. So I want to match that with the resin assembly as well. And that's achieved either by shortening this uh, part of the engine bearer or drilling the hole just a little bit deeper. So that's the surgery completed that will enable me to use the Tamiya plastic and that just gives me the security of knowing that the assembly is going to go together properly uh, and I can now carry on with the detailing from the brass inset. So that's what's left of the Tamiya assembly with the bulkhead fitting as it should. And the resin parts will hopefully fit inside as well. I hope there's enough room to get those in with all these accessory parts on the side. But we'll just have to press on, I think, see how we get on. So this stage, I'm going to use the foundations that I've got here with the bulkhead in the nacelle to position the engine bearers. Just want to be careful here not to actually glue the plastic parts together. I just want the bearers to be tacked in position. I'm just adjusting the fit of this bearer just to make sure that the parallel so just careful adjustment of the top mount in there just to get them absolutely parallel with each other uh, and at exactly the same angle because if that doesn't happen, the engine won't sit properly. So the engine, after a bit of wiggling around, does go in there and it's sitting level. So hopefully I've got those bearers in the right position. Goodness me, it's uh, a lot more complicated than the Tamiya. OK, 
Okay, so that's as much assembly as I can do uh, just at the moment. So I'm going to get these primed up and make a start on some of the painting. Uh, then we can start to uh, do some assembly after that and hopefully we'll get the engine installed into the bearers. This is a dry brush with some XF76 which is a very light grey green colour. So it just adds a bit of definition. Next I want to give the bearers a wash just to bring out a little bit more of the detail. Um, and to do that I just want to give them a very light gloss coat so that it'll take the wash a bit more easily and then obviously we'll have to flat coat that afterwards. So I'll get all that done now. This is Citadel base colour black and it's a nice paint to use for brush painting. If you get it thin to the right consistency it goes on nice and smooth. Okay, so uh, now I think I'm going to have to try and get the engine located into the bearers. So I'm going to start with the right hand bearer, this one, because this pipe has to thread through the bearer. And it's quite a tricky routing. That appears to be in the right place now, so I'm going to carefully glue the bearer. Okay, here goes. This side is a bit more straightforward because there are no pipes to thread through. Okay, so that's the engine safely in the bearers. You can see there's a lot of cabling to locate yet. But the main objective was to get the engine safely located. 
There are one or two uh, spots of glue that I just need to tidy up. This back pipe was quite a difficult squeeze to get in there, but it was in the Tamiya kit as well when I did the uh, port side engine. You notice that I finally broke off the two stays at the back, uh, but they're going to be easily repaired once I come to install the engine into the nacelle. I just need to tidy up some of these cables now and get them into the proper routing. I can tidy these up a bit later once they're all in the final position. So they're more or less in the final positions. Just loop that tape over to hold them uh, in place for the moment. So the next step with this assembly is to finally position the bulkhead in place. That will then allow me to fit this cross brace which goes on the underside here. Uh, I can't fit that yet because that will just prevent me spreading the two undercarriage legs apart so that I can get uh, the bulkhead in and this frame in. You can see it's quite a bit wider so we just need to open these legs up a little bit uh, and fitting that brace will stop me doing that. So that's the next step but I'm not going to have time to do that this week. I've run out of time now before I need to do the editing for the premiere on Friday night. So I'll leave it there for the moment and we'll come back next week and hopefully get this engine finished up. Okay, so that's as much as I'm going to be able to do for this episode. It's uh, time to get the video edited for this week. Uh, so it's only modest progress. And I've been slowed down an awful lot this week by the poor fit of the uh, brass in bulkhead. If that had gone in perfectly well then I would have probably got a lot further on and probably even got the engine mounted into the Tamiya nacelle. But it's fought me this week, I have to say, and there were times uh, this week, uh, once or twice, where it might have just been better to build the Tamiya engine. Uh, it's disappointing really because quite a lot uh, of brass insets that I've built in the past, they've fitted perfectly well into the donor kit. So. Uh, it's just one of those issues, it's just one thing that didn't fit well and I just wasn't prepared to take the chance of moving ahead in the build with basically that bulkhead which is a big foundation for the engine construction uh, when I wasn't happy with it so I could just foresee all sorts of corrections and workarounds later on in the assembly and I didn't want to do that, it's too expensive a kit to risk ruining in that way. And at the stage where I started to do the cutting about, I still had the option of just binning the brass inset altogether. I've still got all the Tamiya parts. Uh, and it was possible if this hadn't worked to just revert and build the kit straight out of the box with both engines. So we'll wait to see. It might be a case that I end up doing that anyway, but I'm going to persevere a little bit more with this brass inset and see if we can make something of it. So I've got a busy week coming up to do even more work on this engine and I'm sure I will get it done next time. The basic fitting of the engine into the bearers is quite a big step uh, and hopefully I'll be able to catch up with myself over the next few days. So I'll crack on with the rest of this work and hopefully get uh, the engine installed. But in the meantime everybody look after yourself, stay safe and I'll see you next time.
Bye for now.